Welcome back to the final day of reviewing Ninjago Seasons for 5 days. This year has been a big one for Ninjago thanks to the next saga releasing, Dragons Rising, introducing new characters, a bigger world and new concepts. We are introduced to Eren who wants to be a ninja, but the good times are interrupted by a massive event called the Merge. Eren is blown away by the Merge, but he is saved by Lloyd and the other ninja as they try to save as many people as they can. The Merge collapses all the realms together, separating Eren from his parents, but at least he has one of Lloyd's hoods. We get a time skip, which is debated by fans. Some evidence shows it's been a year, and some say it's been a few years. I'd like to think it's been about three years since the merge happened. Oh yeah, and the ninja have reportedly gone missing. We meet Sora, and yes, these two are our new main characters. Fans were not happy with the ninja getting replaced, but I think it's about goddamn time. The other ninja are in this season, but aren't really the main focus. The two are in a junkyard stealing parts, but they are caught. Eren tries to fight off some robots with his own version of Spinjitsu. He doesn't do too well. He instead relies on his trusty grappling hook. Sora hacks the bots and makes them dance. I'm just naturally good at tech stuff. It's been like that since I was a kid. Foreshadowing? They take a stroll through the crossroads, which is where the people of the different realms come together. One of these realms is called Imperium, which is where Sora is from. She didn't like it, so she left. Do I have to mention how good the show looks? May just step up, and these episodes are back to being 22 minutes long. We get a little looky into what happens in Imperium. This is Raz, and this is Rapton, and I do not like Rapton. He's annoying. They have seemed to have captured something. Whatever, who cares? Mech race time. There's also a frog guy named Mr. Frohickey. Sora's rival here is Creel, accompanied by Whack Rats from Prime Empire. Hey, I like that season. Man, this beast must be big. Oh, what? The race begins, but before they can win, that little dragon is chased right in front of them. Sora wants to save the dragon because she knows what will happen to it if it's caught. Hmm, ominous. They use the mech to grab him and flee. Um, not very far. They begin to fall, but the dragon starts to glow and seem to give Sora power to control technology. That's pretty neat. She rebuilds the mech and they are both confused. Eren does his best. Uh-oh, Raz is here. I appreciate Eren's bravery to just try and attack him, but what did he think was gonna happen? I like Raz. He's really intimidating, in this episode at least. They are all taken and Sora explains who the hunters are and what they do with the dragon. They are called the Claws of Imperium and they hunt down dragons to use them as a battery to power their city. Kind of like the hunters from Hunted. They begin to lose hope until... Hey, I know that guy. I will say, for the first episode, it did really well setting up everything. And Eren and Sora are decent characters. So much that they didn't even need the other ninja to be in it for it to be good. Lloyd is here looking for the person who did spin jitsu on the bridge. He's in luck because... There's Eren. He fights a guard and frees the two. Lloyd is astonished by Eren's ability and wrapped in attacks. Also... Theme song, cool music, but poo visuals. Sora struggles to use her new powers, so Eren goes off to free the dragon. The little guy connects with Sora again, and she shows off her elemental powers by almost exploding all of them. Lloyd has so many questions, but they can get answers later. Lloyd takes the children back to the monastery to search for the dragon's home. They figure out where it is, but the only way to get there isn't working at the moment. Luckily, Sora is there to fix it. Eren and Lloyd connect, and we get a flashback to before the merge. By the way, having the core suits cannon is cool. After everyone was separated, Lloyd was sent back to the monastery alone. Lloyd found a connection between a new type of dragon called Source Dragons and the merge. The bounty mysteriously reappears, and Lloyd almost wrecks Kai. They use their powers to close a merge quake, then Kai heads off to investigate himself. The bounty is fixed and they head off, but are found by the claws of Imperium. They almost crash into an island, but are saved by a giant source dragon who speaks to them telepathically. The little dragon's name is Ryu. Anyway, fighting begins and the big source dragon connects with Lloyd, giving him a major power up. Before the season came out, I thought this was the Spinjitsu burst, but no, I was wrong. The claws are defeated and Lloyd officially takes Eren and Sora under his wing. Oh, and Ryu goes with them as well. Let's see what our new recruits are up to. Oh, they are sleeping. Some of them are more keen to train than others. They want to go to this carnival in the crossroads, but Lloyd wants them to stay and train. Lloyd activates the training course and challenges them to complete the course before he finishes his tea. Sounds familiar. Lloyd explains who Wu is to the newbies. Sora barely makes it through the day, so she peer pressures Eren into sneaking out with her. They take Ryu as well. Hey look, a Munz and Geckles. I know those guys. Eren wants to enter a pie into a pie baking contest. Crime is afoot and Whack Rats kidnap Labo. He's the guy who won 
won that mech race at the start. The newbies give chase. They fare pretty well in combat. Creel needs the money to rescue her best friend from a mysterious captor. Lloyd is trying to find the newbies, but comes across a memorial for them and all the other ninja. It's a sweet moment. Oh yeah, the plot. This is Dorama. He's a theater guy and fights off the newbies. Dorama is able to absorb energy, so he's been draining these whack rats for a better show. It's not explained how he's able to absorb things. They are forced to fight a giant and creepy looking puppet, but here's Lloyd. Aaron somehow transfers his binjutsu into this horn. Get ready for that to not get explained. Anyway, the team defeats the puppet and Dorama, and Labo is safe. Eren gets second place in that pie competition, if you care about that. Raz recruits Dorama to join the Imperium forces. More training, let's go! Sora still can't seem to use her powers without Ryu. Erm, um, the old bounty is coming in pretty quick. Holy shit. The whole ship is trashed and Kai is nowhere to be found. They land the ship roughly and investigate. The old girl has seen better days. The newbies head off in the direction where the bounty came from. Dorama is tasked with getting this machine working. Raz is displeased with the results. They end up in the realm of madness where Kraglies are fighting some dragons. The team decides to help the dragons and swiftly takes out the Kraglings. That's until... Nia shows up. She reveals that the dragons were actually attacking the Kraglings. This is awkward. Nia asks if Lloyd has seen Jay. She's just as disappointed as I am. We meet the Kragling King who was racist against dragons. Nia ended up here after the merge and stumbled across this war. Kai was also here fighting. The dragons were stealing the Kraglings mud, which is their life force. I love how we're getting different stories from all across the new lands. Kai was thrown far away in the battle, but on his way back, he accidentally leads the dragons to the Kragling village. Fighting ensues. A sick change is that the characters' hands glow when they use their powers. It just looks really cool to me. Ryu overflows the dragons, and this somehow causes all the life force they stole to return to the Kraglings. Um, okay. That's cool, I guess. Sora begins to have some doubts about herself. Sora still doesn't believe she has powers. Bruh. Lloyd explains to Nia what the merge quakes are. They are two realms trying to occupy the same space, and elemental powers can shut them down, somehow. They are a big threat, so the team needs to figure out how to stop them. On their journey back to the monastery, the team comes across the Cloud Kingdom. Look at this! Their spinjutsu acts like air jutsu. The kingdom is having a pest issue. Lloyd tries to close the merge quake while the others protect the people from Squidward here. The newbies are a little tied up, but it lets them go. They fall almost to their deaths until they are caught by wind? This turns out to be this chick, who is the next elemental master of wind. Hell yeah. It's been so long since we saw this power. The monster is sent back through and the day is saved. The head rider guy immediately thinks that they saved the day because they wrote it. But the ninja have been through this song and dance before. Yeah, it's all bullshit. Nia thinks that they probably have information on how to stop the merge quakes. The newbies confront the wind girl, but she is very defensive about it because that's not the Cloud Kingdom way. When Nia asks this worm for the information they are looking for, it attacks them by shooting. Oh, Ew. Another Squidward monster appears, so Aaron goes to get the ninja. Euphrasia says, screw the riders and springs into action. She's able to fly, which Moro could only do for a little while. Two more Squidwards? The ninja are saved by Aaron. Even though we didn't get to see it, but whatever, it's fine, I'm fine. They all work together and send the monsters back to where they came. There's also this remark. I knew the last one. I already like you more. Nia stays behind to do more research. Also, Raptor stole dragons while the ninja were busy. Dragon hunting action! They almost get it, but the ninja step in. Raptor activates that machine Dorama was playing with, which is a giant wolf, and Sora seems to recognize it. It's a Fotak which Sora actually created when she was in Imperium. Yeah, it's a flashback episode. She created this hard light device when she was very young, and we see how the politics of Imperium work. Everything is run on dragon energy, which appears to be all fine and dandy, but something seems a little off. Sora shows off her device at the science fair, and she made it indestructible. Not very wise in retrospect, Sora. Her device was noticed by her idol, Dr. LaRoe. And you must be Anna. Why is everyone referring to Sora as Anna? Well, we'll see later. LaRoe offers Sora the chance to work at her lab. Back in the present, Lloyd, Aaron, and Sora plan to head back to Imperium. In her tour, Sora meets a dragon named Sora. LaRoe shows interest in using the Fotak as a weapon. Powering it up hurts Sora, the dragon, and this upsets Sora, the person. She runs home, but her parents aren't any help. They roast her, and now the whole kingdom hates her. She ran away and changed her name to Sora. And here we are. The newbies sneak through the sewers and find themselves at a security room. They get ID cards and new outfits. They are caught and escape. Sora finds her Fotek, but comes face to face with Dr. LaRoe. Dun dun dun. Aaron and Ryu are chased through the streets, but land in a dumpster. So logic say they are safe. 
Eren saves some Imperium children, who are the Imperium Teenage Protection Force. This is Percival. He's kind of important later. While Eren is making friends, Lloyd runs into a weird girl with fire powers. This confuses Lloyd, as Kai should be the only one with fire power. Her name fits her power, Wildfire. They fight, and Lloyd schools her, literally. Your power level is off the charts, but your attacks are ooh, all over the place. They form a truce and attack some guards. What's Sora up to? Realizing that Laro has made a lot more of those indestructible Fotax. Dorama is also here, and he threatens to absorb Dragon Sora. She flashbangs them, and the two Soras make a run for it. Lloyd and Wildfire unlock a cell for a dragon who raised Wildfire. That makes sense. The Soras are captured again by Rapton, and she is forced to work for them. Lloyd frees the other dragons. Eren's new friends find Ryu, and they aren't very happy. Remember, they are racist. Sora completes the work on the rest of the Fotax. Are you ready for Wildfire backstory? Child lands in the realm of wildness, is found by Heatwave, is raised by Heatwave and this robot, gets powers all of a sudden. Heatwave is taken by Imperium. Here we are. The dragons are led to the front gate by Lloyd and they can't fly out because there's a barrier. Eren and Ryu escape the protection force. Oh hey, I forgot Kai was in this season. He hears a strange whisper, which leads him down to some old tunnels. The whispers seem to be coming from this weird glowing orb. This orb sounds like woo. Eren Eren rejoins Lloyd, but he lost Ryu in the process. Don't worry, he's found by Percival. Oh. Sora and Dorama fight, and she escapes again with Dragon Sora. The other dragons are confronted by more Fotex and Rapton. Ugh. I like how the Fotex glow red and blue. A big battle begins, but the Fotax are indestructible. Sora and Sora join up with the others, and Eren isn't happy about her activating the Fotax. She has a plan to shut them down, but she needs Ryu. Oh, this is awkward. Kai travels through the tunnels and finds Nia? A great part about Dragons Rising is all the mysteries that are set up. It keeps the audience wanting more. The next episode starts with a flashback to when Lloyd was still a child. He's training with Master Wu, but he doesn't wear the suit he had in season one. It's the March of the Oni suit, which seems to be the default suit for showing young Lloyd. He obviously doesn't sound the same, but it's still a little disappointing that we don't see the old suit. The lesson is to tune out outside distractions, to find peace inside so you can find it outside. This is the only appearance of Master Wu in the season. The battle continues as Sora and Eren head back for Ryu. The newbies sneak into the security center again and still can't find him. Percival brings Ryu to the Emperor herself, and she is quite pleased. Kai and Nia are still trying to figure out what's going on. And look at Kai's fire. I greatly prefer the look of their elemental powers from the last era of the show. It's cool now that the character's hands glow, but the powers themselves look almost the same. Same goes for their spinjitsu. Eren and Sora locate the little guy, and Beatrix flames Raz for failing so hard. Kai and Nia are led to a machine by the ghost and plan on activating it. The battle is just too chaotic. Luckily, there was a flashback of Lloyd learning how to deal with this. The dragons attack the palace, and Rapton makes a dumb joke. What'll happen to my collection of delicate porcelain unicorn figurines? Kai turns the machine on by kicking it, and out comes Zane? How did Zane get his new suit? Kai and Nia got theirs after rejoining Lloyd, but Zane just has his. Doesn't matter. Eren and Sora are found trying to save Ryu, and a strange building comes out of the ground. This is the Monastery of Imperium, as Zane puts it, and the episode ends with a line I think is kind of cringe. Ninja never quits! Aaron finally learned Sora's real name. Stupid Aaron. The cringe line gives the newbies the hope they need to fight back against Laro. Lloyd is stumped by how the three of them are at Imperium, but there isn't much time to talk. Laro goes down easy, but now they have to deal with this chick, Jordana. You don't know who she is? Me either, but we get a flashback. She was in Sora's class and was jealous of her progress. She now works at the lab and hates Sora. The ninja, wildfire, and the dragons take refuge in the Imperium Monastery, and the newbies free themselves. Oh shit, Raz is here. The ninja think to use the monastery's teleporter to retreat further back to their monastery. They find a passageway leading to a massive power supply. This power is actually a massive source dragon that was captured. The dragon tells Lloyd to take his power. Lloyd absorbs the power, and we get one of the coolest scenes in the series. He has a vision of a bunch of graves with ninja hoods. That's not concerning. What are Eren and Sora doing? Oh, freeing Ryu and taking down Raz. Lloyd uses all his power to open the teleporter so everyone can pass over. He then passes out. Sora turns off all the Fotex using her powers and escapes with the rest of them. Lloyd wakes up back home and everyone is chilling. Some of the dragons and wildfire decide to stay at the monastery. Raz is locked up for failing beer tricks, which is weird because Rapton failed to stop the ninja from escaping. He's more of a screw up. That's 10 episodes done. Surely that's the end of the season, right? Nope, there's still 10 more, 
making this one of the longest seasons of Ninjago. Let's go! Another merge quake opens at the crossroads, so the ninjas step in with the help from the dragons they saved. Hey look, Eren's got his full ninja suit! Lloyd is dressing himself too thin with training Eren and Sora, keeping the monastery nice and clean, and fixing that wall. Zane begs, no, demands that everyone listens to something he found. The merge quakes are appearing more and more, and they'll keep going until everything is destroyed. Nia recognizes an island which matches some research she found. She thinks whatever is there can stop the merge quakes, so they head off. Beatrix is trying to cope with the dragons escaping, which creates doubt among the people. The ninja find the Temple of the Dragon Cores, but it's locked by a puzzle. Zane tries to figure out the combination, but doesn't come up with anything. Eren figures it out immediately. They are attacked by some spirits while Rapton arrives outside. They are unstoppable, so Lloyd figures out to rebuild an altar which combines the spirits, and now we have one guy. The spirit tells the story of the Dragon Cores, which is lore that makes Arthur's book obsolete. The first Binjutsu master created Ninjago. We already knew that, but he also made other realms. He foresaw all the realms smashing into one, which was dubbed the Coalescence. Fearing it was on the horizon, the first Binjutsu master approached the seven source dragons, which gave him energy to create three dragon cores. These kept the realms from colliding. He hid these cores across three different realms. Lloyd asks for the locations, and the spirit gives it to him because he's related to the first Binjutsu master. And that was a big lore dump. Rapton also sees the locations of these cores. Looks like we're in store for a race. Mr. Frohickey is also recruited to do some chores at the monastery. Oh dear, Raz is literally a caged animal. The team splits into three teams to go after the cores, while Zane stays behind. The teams are Aaron and Sora and Ryu, Lloyd and Eren, and Kai and Wildfire. I do like how they split them up so the new characters are paired with the older ones. They also make a joke about there being two Soras. Yes. The first team we follow is Eren and Lloyd. We get a scene where Eren tries to learn how to do his object spinjitsu thing from so long ago. We don't get many scenes of training throughout the series, so I love this. Eren figures out how to do it, but he obliterates the engine. They crash into the ocean. Man, how are they gonna get anywhere? Oh yeah, it's a boat. They come across a village, but are attacked by Merlopians and a giant crab. It seems to be getting controlled by this crown. The two escape and find a small raft with a bunch of people on it. These people lived at the sea village, but were overthrown by the Merlopians. Lloyd decides to train these farmers to stand a better chance against the crab. It is really cool that we see little side quests during the main plot. Anyway, the assault goes wellish and Lloyd heads after the leader with the crown. He keeps saying the same thing over and over again. There's a fun fight between the two. Lloyd knocks the crown off, and the Merlopian is relieved. Turns out, the crab was controlling the Merlopians. The two forces team up against the crab, and Lloyd manages to kick his tooth out, defeating it. This would have been a perfect moment for Eren to use his object spinjitsu to hit it. Seems like a missed opportunity. Kai and Wildfire are in a bit of a situation. They are trapped in a hole by the Bone Warriors from the core Lego sets. Again, making stuff that isn't canon, canon, is great. They get themselves out of that hole. Mr. Frohickey is hanging out with Zane, and we see how much Zane misses Pixel. He needs a special part, so Mr. Frohickey takes him to the crossroads. They run into Creel, who now owns the junkyard. Because they are broke, Creel kicks them out. Wildfire stole some gems as a prank, and boy does she like pranking people. She hits them with the fire handshake. Wildfire is really childish, which is a perfect way to show Kai's development. He also acted very cocky and selfish at the start of the show, so seeing him mentor Wildfire is great. The core they seek is protected by lava tides, so luckily, Wildfire knows them, since she came from the same realm. That image is so old, can I get to find the face of the enemy? Oop. Never mind, they hate her. She pranked them badly. The lava tides show them the core, but they immediately throw it back into the hole. The crossroads are celebrating Zane Day. How convenient. Affirmative. Today we engage in zany games and consume zany foods. Mm, yum, yum. Oh no, racism. The racist does tell them about a Zane lookalike contest with a cash prize. So of course, Zane enters. The celebrity head judge is the Gekko Chancellor from Shintaro. This was a pleasant surprise. This is what the show needs to keep doing because they have a lot of characters they can use for quirky situations. While Zane is surprisingly losing, the fire duo is cleaning up Wildfire's pranks. They complete the tasks, but they still don't get the core. Instead of coming up with a good plan, the two jump down the hole. Oh yeah, Zane loses the contest. But the third place prize is a gift card for Creel's junkyard. That's crazy. The fire gang get the core and almost don't make it out. Also, Dorama snatches the core. Time for a very memorable episode. Mr. Frohickey brings Zane a block of 
Ice. Mr. Froakie is just trying to be nice, but it's obviously kind of awkward. Team Dragon ends up in a tomb, looking for their core. Nia plans to use Seeker Stones, which can lead them to anything they are looking for. Ryu finds a copy of Clutch Powers' book. Oh no! The tomb was actually created by the Jin. Nia recaps Sora on the Jin lore like who they were and that their land was destroyed. They activate the Seeker Stones, but all it does is give him a sick tattoo. Yep, Zane has lost it. Dragon Sora doesn't like their new tats, and they start to glow. All of a sudden, these things called Howler's Attack. And do you remember when everyone thought this was Jay? Even then I thought it was stupid. They have some trouble with the Howlers, but the dragons step in and they flee. They arrive at a cave. This is the home of Erakor, the last djinn. This forearm fellow tells the group that Dragon Sora is actually called Xanth. Finally, I don't have to call it Dragon Sora anymore. Erikor was away from Jinjago when it was destroyed, with only a little stone remaining. He flames them for using Seeker Stones improperly, so now they're cursed. The Howlers can only be defeated by Jin magic. Luckily, they just met a Jin. I'm glad they gave Erikor a different personality than Nauticon. The Howlers show up again, and Erikor just wants to give up. His little stone starts to glow because of their hope or something. This convinces Erikor to fight back, but Sora needs to wish for it. Is yours to keep. He said the line! Chills. The Howlers are defeated. Oh yeah, there was also a B-plot of Mr. Frohiki messing up things. I'm just now realizing something. Remember a while ago when I opened a few Lego sets and one of them was the new Lloyd Spinner? Well, in that set was a weird brown ball. This was a Dragon Core. They were foreshadowing them half a year before they showed up. I'm sure everyone knows that by now, but I didn't. Anyway, Dorama. I like the hats his underlings wear. The Lava Tide steal the core back, and so begins a three-way chase. Erikor helps Nia and Sora by giving them a compass, which points to the core. Aaron and Lloyd arrive at this garden and find the core out in the open. They suspect something is up, and don't take it immediately. This was actually a test, and these snail guys just give them the core. Someone before them tried to steal the core, and it was Raptor. They captured him and planned to kill him. You know, I really agree with these snails. The Lava Tides are very effective at running away, and grow when they eat fire. So that's happening. The compass leads Team Dragon to a junkyard with a bunch of random stuff around. They chase after some kids, so that's happening. Raptor pleads for Lloyd and Aaron to help him, and he can be freed if someone walks the impossible path. Dun dun dun. Lloyd wants to do it as a teaching moment. Team Fire escapes with their core. Yay! Lloyd heads into the impossible path and comes out fine. Turns out the path is covered in salt which is very dangerous to the snail folk. They free Raptor, and he immediately attacks them. I hate this man. He's thankfully tased by these strange agents who disappear in a portal. Lloyd and Aaron follow suit. Heatwave was also hurt. Nia and Sora follow the children, but are confronted by a giant rock fella. This turns out to be Cole. What? How did he do that? How did he get here? So many questions that will be explained in the next episode. Oh. Cole shows his beautiful face and comes out of his rock form. We are introduced to those two children. One's a serpentine, obviously, but the other one is a formling, yo! We haven't seen formling since season 11, so it's cool that they brought one back. Cole ended up here after the merge, which is actually an Imperium legend. The land of lost things. That's because things that are lost end up here. A giant rubbish monster called the Horder chases after the group, and they end up in a giant noodle cup. Who's that guy? I don't know. But Cole can feel the earth screaming, which is kind of dark. And that strange guy sticks the noodle cup to the hoarder's hand. This is Geo. He's the elemental master of fusion. So he can stick anything together, which can't be unstuck. Maybe not the best name for it, but what can you do? The hoarder can't approach their home called the Rookery. That's important later. Another new character. This is Bonzel, who is a skeleton. I know, it's hard to tell. Cole once again is able to bring people together and lead them. Probably one of his best character traits. This machine is responsible for keeping the Hoarder away. It's powered by the Dragon Core, of course. Cole won't let Nia take the core, and they can't just leave because the Finders, Cole's little gang, can't physically leave. Sora thinks she can create a new power source to replace the core. Now Kai gets a good character moment. He uses this blue stuff to help with Heatwave's injury. He's actually smart, what? Sora and Geo bond over their shared rejection of their homes. Everyone theorized that Geo was a combination of the Gekul and the Munts species, and that's pretty much correct. He's a Munts with the colors of a Gekul. Drones show up to take Jiro, so Nia fights them off, while Cole fights off the Horder. This fight has some really cool moments. Cole can't use his Rocco mode because he needs a boost from Geo's power, which doesn't actually make much sense. Bonzel informs Sora of Dr. Leroux approaching, and Sora does her best. The core is taken, and the Horder shows up again. Geo powers Cole up, and his feet glow now? For free? 
Sora uses her powers to rip the face off the hoarder, and they capture this little guy. He's a Laro experiment. Geo tells Cole that he doesn't actually power Cole up. It's just him. Cole has always had the most development with his powers. And I like this new feature. Lloyd and Aaron arrive in a massive office building of some kind. There's a huge line with this guy waiting for his whole lifetime. This is the administration and these agents show up. Man, Kai is a really good mentor. Kai hasn't had much character growth since season 11, and I really enjoy Kai actually teaching someone. When Nia merged with the sea, Wu taught Kai a way to calm down, and now he's teaching Wildfire. The administration is all about forms and permits, and they are even getting given away by some mysterious figure. Lloyd gets another message, and another one with directions. They are led to... Zane. So he was the one sending the messages. Zane was brought here when the administration agents showed up because he couldn't get the portal working. Basically, the administration is part of the realm of madness and all permits and paperwork are all useless. They catch wind of the core getting destroyed, so they head out in a tube. They all get split up, but Lloyd finds the core. Aaron causes a stir and the workers call for their manager. This manager is Jay. Hold your applause. This is his only scene in the season and people weren't happy, but I don't really mind. We'll obviously get him eventually. And this was a fun surprise. Lloyd commandeers a mech and stops the core from burning. Why is this mech here? Who knows? Heatwave gets better. And it turns out the core the Fire Twins have is fake. Dorama switched it out. Zane shows up in a new whip and the two ninja flee. Aaron joins the chase. One thing that I think is underappreciated is how exciting everything is. There's just so much energy in scenes and there's a lot of great surprises. If you didn't see the Lego set for this mech, it can split into two mechs, which Aaron uses to shut down a laser grid. Zane does paperwork and the three ninja escape. Hooray! They can finally head back to the monastery where Wildfire has bad news. The team needs to head back to Imperium to get that core, but a massive burst of energy scares them. Ooh. It's bonkers to me that we get a Raz flashback. He comes from the realm of wildness, which is where Wildfire is from. In this time, Beatrix's father was the emperor of Imperium. Raz pitches the idea to capture a source dragon to power Imperium, but dragons actually live in peace with Imperium, with this emperor. He seeks his other daughter, Zeatrix on Raz, and she has elemental power, huh? It seems powerful too, but we actually never find out what this power is. A lot to unpack there, but there's no time for that. Imperium has all three dragon cores. Wait, I thought Lloyd got his core away from Raptor. How does he have it here? Ah, Cole! Team Dragon needs to get into Imperium, so Sora builds armor for Jiro to help them pass the barrier. Cole isn't going with them, because he's been hearing Ghost Wu's voice. So Nia understands that he needs to follow that voice. Speak of the devil. This was such a tease. Maybe next season we'll see this adventure. With all three dragon cores, Beatrix's plan is set into motion. The weapon doesn't work very well, which resulted in that burst of energy from before. One of the cores wasn't acting right, and Raptor disappeared. We see more of the flashback, where Beatrix reveals the elemental power her sister had was her father's, and that it is granted to the firstborn child. Beatrix was born a few minutes later, so now she feels like she was robbed of power. This pisses her off, so the two enact a plan. To blow up her father? Raz also neutralizes her sister, but we don't know where she ended up, so I suspect she will appear in the next season. Wildfire distracts the guards, and what's this? A continuous action one take? Raz tries to convince Beatrix to let him out, but um, she doesn't. The ninja are immediately found, but Percival and his gang saves them. What the hell is going on? They are now a resistance to fight back against the Empress. Okay, I guess that's what's going on. The call that Raptor brought was a fake, which makes sense now. Laro refuses to use the giant dragon's energy to finish the weapon, so Jordana steps up. Beatrix shows up in a big mech. It's Ninjago, of course there's a big mech. Their elemental powers are rendered useless by the mech, and Team Dragon arrives to break the barrier. The group leaves the dragons to hold off Beatrix, while Percival shows them the Resistance hideout. All of Zane's efforts to open the Monastery teleporters was for naught, as Beatrix had the Monastery of Imperium taken down. The ninja are caught up on the Imperium lore, and Percival has a plan to broadcast a message to all of Imperium to motivate the people. The hunted parallels continue. Xanth and Jiro are doing well. Oh, never mind. Beatrix is doing pretty well, and the group commence their plan. Kai and Wildfire do some terrorism, and a few of them make it to the radio tower. Percival has a man on the inside to help them. A new character, I hope. Oh, nuts, it's Raptor. Why is Raptor helping him? He just doesn't like the Empress because she's gone insane. Anyway, they have no other choice. Lloyd, Nia, and Zane are confronted by Beatrix, and Eren is confronted by Dorama. Yes, another excellent one take with slow-mo. Wild dragons rising, relax. Jordana still can't get the Source Dragon's power, yet. The broadcast goes out, and Sora preaches to the people, 
exposing Imperium. She compares the people being controlled just like the dragons, so they are all dragons in a sense, and they rise up. Hehehe. <laughs> The Empress retreats and retrieves the weapon she was building. Turns out it's a merge quake gun. Um, that's fucking metal. Jordana must have come through. Everyone sets off to stop Beatrix. She starts blasting people, sucking them into the merge quakes. Even main characters like Wildfire are sucked into the quakes. No plot armor here. No, Percival! Ryu as well? What the hell? Hey, Eren did the object spinjitsu to save Sora. Good stuff. I love how chaotic this battle is, and so does Raz apparently. Oh. Bye, Kai. Lloyd calls in that mech again to help fight. Oh no, Raptor, I am so sad. During all this crazy stuff, Sora's parents find her, and they still don't believe that the Empress is nuts. Sora scolds her parents, and this finally unlocks her true potential. Finally! She destroys the weapon, and Eren kicks Beatrix into a quake. The damage the Empress did pushed the merge quakes over the edge, and now everything is being destroyed. The bounty begins to crash, but Xanth shows off some power of her own. She can grow and attach herself to the bounty, okay? They've got two of the dragon cores, so they only need the one at the monastery. A merge quake opens right in front of Eren, revealing his parents, but they disappear again. How are they gonna get the core here? Oh hell yeah, Mr. Frohickey! With all the cores together, Lloyd tries to be the conduit for its power once more, and connects to that place again. He uses the power to stop the merge quakes, probably for good. This spits everyone that was taken back out. We aren't done yet. Lloyd takes the cause to the massive source dragon to hopefully free him. Turns out, this guy was one of the original seven source dragons, and that all elemental powers come from these dragons. Not sure how this impacts the lore, but the dragon is freed. Kai and Wildfire practice, and we get a comparison between their powers. Kai's fire incinerated the cans, while Wildfire's only melted them. Apparently Wildfire's power is called Heat, which is a little stupid. It's just a less powerful fire, I guess. Jordana is confronted by Raz, who wants to hire her to join his master? She has some of the Source Dragon's energy, which excites Raz greatly. Holy shit, what a season. Definitely one of the best seasons in terms of scope, lore, and new things. I love how they executed everything, even if I wanted to see a little bit more of Colin J, but it isn't their story anymore. I love Sora's character arc, learning to use her powers and overcoming her need to prove herself to her parents. I do wish we had more development on Eren's end, but I'm sure we'll have plenty of seasons to do that. And so concludes the final season review. It's been a fun and tiring journey to make all of these. So I'm taking the rest of December off. I'll see you next year with a lot of great videos. Spoilers, the next video is Hero Factory.